Okay, we are live. I think people might be uh, slowly joining us on the virtual space. Um, so we'll let people roll in for a minute. Um, and there is a comment section. You're welcome to use that um, to ask questions. I will make sure that I uh, have time to answer questions at the end. And um, let's just give it another minute or two since it's just two o'clock Eastern and not everyone is as timely as I am. Uh, but again, welcome. Today we're going to be making um, a photo book with Blurb. And it's going to be fun and educational and you're going to learn a lot. And uh, let's just, let's get started. There's no time to waste. Okay. Um, welcome. My name is Jesse. I am a photographer, uh, author, educator, and official Blurb creator. For my, my pronouns are he, him. I am based in Massachusetts. Uh, for the past 15 years, I was a uh, private commission photographer focused on fine art, black and white dog portraits. And if you registered for this class in advance, um, you probably received a, a folder of um, stock uh, dog photo images, not mine. Uh, and if you didn't receive those photos um, and you want some stock photos to use for this class today, put a message in the chat and, and one of the blurb tech people behind the scenes will send you that link. Um, so someone's saying there's a delay between audio and video. Does anyone else see that on the blurb end? Please let me know. Um, Okay, so um, I did high-end dog portraits for uh, 15 years. I no longer do that. Now I am, uh, okay, great. Um, now I am focused on photographing and interviewing trans and non-binary youth across the country for a project called Are You Okay? that has recently been turned into a book, which I will show you in a minute through Blurb. Um, so uh, today's class is going to be 90 minutes. Again, we'll save about 10 or so minutes at the end to answer questions. I know that's not a lot of time, but I want to make sure we go through the book right program. Uh, but throw your questions in the chat and, and uh, we'll, we'll try and get to all of them. So um, to start, I thought I would just show you some of the blurb books that I have made over the years. The very first blurb book I made was in 2008 when blurb was a very new company. And it's this little book. Uh, a book of my old Polaroids. This was made in 2008. I can't do the math, but that's a long time ago. Um, and it just held up beautifully. Not one page has torn. This is image wrap. It's still in wonderful shape. So Blair was great back in 2008, and it's still great today. I used to use their large format. This is a, These are all photo books. Um, for my traveling portfolio of dog portraits, a great great way if you're a photographer to bring your portfolio around without having to lug around like a big case of prints use a blurb photo book or even a blurb trade book or even a lay flat and bring that around to curators or bring it to shops or bring it to galleries and, and people love it um, and the new book that i just did this is a eight by ten trade book it's called are you okay this is volume one of this very large three-year documentary project. I, again, I'm, I'm a Blurb user because I love Blurb, genuinely. Um, I love the trade paper. This is the nicer end trade paper. It's beautiful. The colors are beautiful. Look at this like turquoise printing on these full pages. Um, the images are great. Uh, so again, I love Blurb and we're gonna talk about how to make a book starting now, so let me share my screen. And, uh, oh, before I do that, housekeeping. Um, today we're going to be using Blurb's BookWrite software. It's free. You can download it from the Blurb site. If you don't already have that downloaded, I recommend doing that now. If you don't have a link accessible, just type it in the chat and someone will um, send it to you. Uh, 
so again, if you registered, you should have um, gotten a folder of stock dog photos that we're going to be using to make our photo book today. We're giving you these stock photos not because we think you should love them or use them, but simply because we want to get you over the hump of, oh my God, what photos do I use? <laughs> How do I make a book? How do I narrow down the group of images? Um, as photographers, as artists of whatever medium, it's our job to pick, select, and narrow down a vast body of work to the strongest few. So for this new book that I did, there's 150 portraits and I chose 34. So we'll talk a little bit about narrowing down the group. We're giving you these stock images just to kind of get you over the hump. Please feel free to use these um, along in this class with me just to kind of get used to putting images into the uh, BookWrite software. Um, one question that I'm not going to be able to answer, but may come up is again, how do I narrow down the images that I love to make a photo book? That's like answering like, why is the sky blue? It's too big of a question to answer. But I want you to know that I am an educator, I'm a, a art artist coach. And if you want to learn more about making a book, about publishing, about uh, how to craft a portfolio. I do artist mentoring and someone will put that link in the chat and I'd be happy to chat with you one-on-one -on -one since this is kind of a constrained uh, time limit for this class. Okay, so the end, let me share my screen and let's do it. Okay, so all I have done so far is opened the book right program Again, it's free. This is the first window that you'll see. It says, welcome to BookRate. Thanks for being friendly, BookRate. Um, you're gonna see uh, over here are your recent books. If you have made a book in the past, your most recent ones will show up. So these are some of the recent books that I've been working on. If you publish a book, like I, the one I just published, and let's say I, I made one proof, which I recommend doing just to see how it goes, see what the printing's like, see how many typos you made, many if you're me, um, see if the sequencing is right. Maybe you wanna go back to that book again and do an edit and reprint it. So that's why it's nice to have all your recent books show up here. Um, we're gonna talk about books. Quickly, Blurb also offers wall art. So you could take a file, um, from your computer and, and make some art. I've actually never done that, but I'm sure it's wonderful. Um, and then there'll be templates. We'll talk about templates, but turn on book, right? And we're gonna press create. And the next window you get is this. Can you guys see this? Um, I wonder if people can see this window. Can somebody tell me? Uh, okay, so I'm not sure if you can see, hmm. hang on guys, um, uh, Blurb, can you guys tell me if you are seeing the next window or if we're just seeing my initial window? Okay, I'm not sure if I'm getting an answer, but um, I'm just going to... Let's see, does anyone else want to tell me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, let's see. Let me uh, just, sorry, um, stop my screen and try to do that again. Just want to make sure you guys can see my. Um, let's see, window. Can I share my entire screen? Is that gonna work? Uh, I don't know guys. Nope, that's not it. Um, not sure what to do about that. Uh, but um, yeah, well, I'm just gonna go through quickly. Um, uh, the different kind of books that you will see when you press create. You're gonna see photo books. You're gonna see lay flat, 
trade books, magazine notebooks. These are all different kinds of books that Bookrite offers. Today, uh, I am going to do a photo book and I'm going to do a standard eight by 10. And let's just see if, oh gosh, you can't see this. So um, I'm sorry. I wonder if Blurb can tell me what. Okay. Um, I'm going to show my whole desktop. Let's just try that. Thanks for your patience. Entire screen. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know if that's... Okay. We're going to load the book right up again. And uh, if there's some weird echoing uh, happening, um, Maybe, oh wait, okay, I think this might be better. Um, okay, so we're gonna press create. We are going to, so here are the different options we have. Again, there are different kinds of books you can make with Blurb. I am going to do a photo book, a standard eight by 10 vertical, and I'm gonna click next. Now, the next creative choice you have to do to choose is um, okay. Um, sorry, computers. Now we're good. Okay, so we have a standard eight by ten portrait. We're going to talk about paper. These are creative choices that where there are no correct re uh, answers. But just so you know, the papers go from most high-end, thickest, expensive to sort of more standard. The Mohawk uh, papers are really tradi uh, traditionally professional grade photo papers. They're thicker. They, you know, they're, they're going to be a little bit slightly bit uh, more true to color. Um, but I love the premium matte myself. Uh, a luster is going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, the premium matte also has a slight sheen, but it's not very shiny. So you can kind of think about which one of these is best. If you go on the Blurb book, uh, the Blurb website, um, you can click in and they will go over a little bit more in depth what each paper is. So I'm going to choose premium matte. And let's talk about um, cover. So there is the hardcover image wrap. Again, that is what. I used um, for my books. Image wrap simply means that the image is wrapped around the hard cover of your book and it doesn't, it's not um, a dust jacket, which is another option, and it's not a soft cover. So I always like the hard cover image wrap. It, it's, it's this, like you can see here on the screen, it's almost like a, a, a semi matte covering, it's durable. And um, I think it's a great option. So you can see here, premium matte paper. We have a hundred pound matte slight sheen. Um, it's saying 20 pages, minimum 46 bucks. So let's jump in. Now we're gonna just title our project. I'm gonna say blurb class test. Please title it something interesting. Start a new project and just give it a second. Okay, here we go. Blurb is working. Book rate is working. Um, now, Blurb, just like every other technological company these days, is offering a little bit of AI. Um, so uh, it will, if you want Blurb to just select all your photos and make you a book, we'll talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about first where to add our, our project photos, but I'll do that on a different screen. So I really want to show you all what Book Rate looks like when you start. So if you ever forget what size book we've chosen, it'll say on the top of your page, standard portrait. A standard portrait photo book, again, is eight by 10 inches. All right, let's just first look at what we have here on the screen. Just like any um, new app, whether you're learning how to use Instagram or your email or your iCal um, or Lightroom or Photoshop, learning book right, you just gotta do it. 
you just got to put your hours in make mistakes and it will get easier i promise but first let's look at some of the key points on the screen okay on the left here blurb has auto populated the first 20 pages you can scroll up and down and see the very top is going to be your cover you can click on that and then if you click on this page it will show up here in the main screen this is what your cover is going to be we'll look at this later um, but again you can click on any of these pages page layouts as we call them and work on them um, but blurb will always just give you automatically 20 blank pages so that's where we're going to look at all of our pages as we start uh, inputting images um, and designing our book, that's sort of one way for us to rearrange the pages. You can look um, up here if you want to add pages. There's multiple ways to add pages, delete pages. Um, I think uh, what's also really important is this area up top here. Um, photos, we haven't added any photos yet, but we will in a minute. Text files, we haven't added any text files, but we will. Well, I'm not going to add text files, but I'll show you how to. And then layouts. We're not going to get into layouts yet. The first thing I want to do, because I want to make a photo book from the images that we were all given, is add photos. It's really easy. Let's do it. So over here under add photos, you have two options. You can either use add from the cloud, as the little cloud icon says, or add from your computer. I am old school, so I will add from my computer. And it's basically going to say, I've already selected the images that I want to use from the book write class. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about, um, I'm just going to select all of these images and oh, press open. And it will automatically populate into our book. Now, I think Blurb gave everyone a, um, a bunch of images from the studio, a bunch of images from outdoor, and I've already narrowed it down to the ones that I really like. So I've already narrowed it down from like, what did we get 50 to maybe 30. But like I mentioned, Blurb has some AI, which is kind of cool. So if you're like in a rush and you just don't want to make any creative choices, which I don't recommend, but you could always say, save me time and make the book computer for me. I would prefer to make the book myself. One thing I didn't mention is the reason why we're doing this class today is because if you, when it's our cutoff, I think the 18th, um, if you take this weekend and lock yourself in your house in front of your computer and work really hard and make a book, it's going to be so fun and so satisfying. If you upload it and order a book by December 18th, which I want to say is Monday, and you pay for express shipping, which of course is going to be more expensive than regular shipping, it will get to you by the holiday we call Christmas or late Hanukkah or whatever. Um, just a little incentive to get a book done this weekend. All right, so to reiterate, I pressed add photos. I told my computer what folder to pull the photos from. And now all those photos are up here. They're not any order, they're just all up here. If you look over here, um, right next to these photos, there's a couple ways to organize. Again, this is a very vast program and you can get into the nitty gritty or you can use it simply just like Photoshop, just like Lightroom. You know, you don't have to know every single last detail to make an amazing book. But just so you know, if you wanted to organize your photos from imported new to old or file names, um, date taken, you can organize them. I, I don't do that. Um, the one thing that I do like is if you click under this, this last drop down here is my favorite. So it will say, what images do you want to see up here in the top? Do you want to see all the images, even the ones you've pulled in and put in the book? Do you want to see only the images you've used in the project or the book? Or do you want to see at all only the images that are unused? I want to see only the images that are unused, which is going to not change anything. So that as I start pulling images into this book, 
If I've already used an image in the book, it will no longer appear up here. So as I pull images in one by one by one, this grouping will get smaller and there's just less to kind of sort through. Um, okay, so that's that. Um, do, 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 uh, let's look at some layouts. Now, again, you can use layouts that Blurb has already created, or you can make your own. So let me show you um, a little bit about what these layouts are. If you go over here under all layouts, you can either see all the layouts that you have to work with that Blurb, they're kind of like jumping off points. Um, you can see my layouts, which are layouts that you have designed and saved. And I'll talk about that in a moment. You can look at spread layouts. Okay, don't know why that didn't do anything. Okay, um, you can look at layouts with just one photo. Again, these are just, you know, layouts that Blurry was already designed for us because designing is a really hard thing to do. Here's a layout with two photos. If you want two little photos, if you want two big photos, um, here's a layout with a grid, a quad. Um, so here's some layout. Again, these are suggested, you know, you can customize these, but here's layouts that have text. When you have these lines, that's just form saying, here's a text box and here's an image box. Image box is gray, text box is sort of white with lines. So this is just kind of a, a way to um, think about jumping off points. The book that I want to make today is a book about I'm imagining all these images are of my dog that I've taken. I want to make a book to give to my dog walker. Again, these are not my images. I don't have a dog anymore, but I'm just giving you a scenario because when you approach making a book, a book is a story. Whether it's a story about your dog, whether it's a story about your large body of work as an artist, whether it's a story about just like some family photos. A book is a story and there needs to be a flow and there needs to be a reason why you're making this book. That's gonna help you organize and select your work. So um, let's just put a couple images in and see what happens. So we're not gonna talk about the cover yet. Um, when I open an art book, I wanna be hit immediately with like, an amazing, intriguing image. Does it have to be the strongest image in the book? I can't answer that, but I want something really impressive. So I loved personally, and this is just my personal preference, I loved these sort of nature images here. So I'm gonna grab a random image and I'm gonna put it in. The way that I would do that is I would just click and drag and drop it in here and just give it a second. Now, you can see that I can click and I can kind of drag this image around, that those blue lines are the center. So if I, you wanna make sure you know where the center is of the page. Um, so if you kind of move it around, that's off center. And once you hit that kind of uh, middle, um, vertical and horizontal center, that's the center of your page. So if this is my first image, yeah, that's a nice opening image. You can see though that if I mouse over this box, the orange, the orange line is, is, the, is the boundaries of that image. And then we have this white page that has no image. And then we always will have this pink area. And that's kind of blurb saying, be careful because you're getting close to the edge of the page. No matter what, there's gonna, just like anything you print, there will be some trimming. So you can decide how close to the edge of the page you want. You can decide if you want an image to just, you know, be edge to edge, full bleed, to have a little breathing room. But I want this image to have a little breathing room just as a, as a introduction to this book. So, cool. We, we dragged an image in, it, it's in. And now that I have selected over here, I wanna only see the unused images this image no longer exists up here. And that helps me just kind of keep track of things. So, all right, the next thing I want to do is um, let's get into, um, let's try a few layouts. 
So I want to go, instead of all the layouts, because there's so many, I'm just scrolling, scrolling. This is overwhelming to me, um, too much information. I want to narrow things down. Let's go to um, a one photo layout. So the gray is the photo content. The white is a negative space. That's a little obvious, but I just wanted to make sure you know that. For example, this template here is an image that gives a little breathing room, a little float space, a little white space around your image, which is a nice creative choice. And this signifies an image that is full bleed, edge to edge of the page, no white space, just complete image. Um, this would be for some reason if you wanted a tiny image in the middle of a page, not my style, but you know. So let's say I want to do a full bleed image. You can literally just click on that and it's gonna populate that template into this first page. And then if I click on this page over here in my pages, and I wanna do an image with a little float space, I can click on this template and it auto populates over here. So we're designing, we are photo book designers. Um, so I like to think about both a rhythm to my photo book and a simplicity. I want there to be repetition in the layout. I want to have some kind of unique standout pages. But I do like the visual aspect of a full bleed image and then an image with a little white space. And let's put some images in there and see what it looks like in the preview. So again, can I tell you what images to, to put in your book? No. But as an artist, I always want my images to speak to each other in a book. Think of putting images on the wall in a gallery. It's the same thing. Images should talk to each other. The subject matter, the texture, the light, the color, the directionality of the gaze, it's all talking to each other. And that's why books are so fun. So I was thinking that if I use this black and white image and just dragged and dropped it in here, there's only two black and white images that I think we were given. It was this image, which is cool. And then there's this image. I'm just dragging and dropping into those templates. So you can see this image is full bleed, right? It's edge to edge. And I love that because it's a dynamic image. We have the sort of flop of the ear, the dogs in motion. I kind of want to feel the extreme energy of this image. And then this image has a little bit, again, the orange line is the bounding uh, box of the image. We're giving it some bleed, we're giving it some white space, um, some breathing room. Uh, but what I like is that there, these are two black and white images, two hounds. Um, and again, I am using directionality of gaze. This is a little bit photo 202 as opposed to 101. But look at the line here. This is how I choose my images. The line of from ear to eye to nose is a diagonal line pointing right at this dog. That feels nice to me visually. What would it look like in an actual book? If you go up here to the top right corner, preview is a very important button. And if you press it, ta-da, we have a preview of our book. So you can see the image on the right, there's that white space, which is kind of nice, but the image on the left is a full bleed. And this is what your book will look like. This is a preview of your book. And um, it's a really helpful tool. So I like the spread. I want to click down here, back to project. And let's just move on. OK, now I want to keep sort of putting together um, maybe uh, one more, um, well, a, a couple more sets of, of pairings of images. Um, and let's go back to our layouts and let's use, let's just make our own, let's, well, let's not do that yet. Let's do, um, uh, we'll keep doing a few more layouts and then we'll make our own layout. So um, this is kind of neat these two horizontal um, images that are, are, are stacked. <clears throat> so 
I, again, I'm going to make sure that I tell Blur, book right, sorry, which page I want this to go to. So I'm going to click over here. So if this orange page is highlighted. That means this is the page I'm working on. This, this is page four. This is page four. I'm going to click the template. It's going to drop that template right in here. And then if I did, I'm just trying to think visually. If there's a, a two up here, which is just what we call two images horizontal, um, maybe I would want a single image next to it. Uh, so maybe I'll click over here on this page and do this. So we're just we're just building. We're just playing around. We're just making creative choices. Now, one thing to know is these two are horizontal and this is a vertical. You can drag you can put a vertical image like this into a horizontal. I'll just show you what that looks like. I'm going to drag and drop this image in here but it's gonna crop that image, obviously. So what you can do, you can hover over and you'll see, you can hover over and you can see the little hand icon. And what that means is you can click and you can kind of reposition that, right? So I'm repositioning this tall image in this horizontal box. Personally, I don't like that. It doesn't make me happy. I'm deleting that. Um, and I'm going to go for a different image in that box. So I'm going to go for horizontal. Here's a horizontal image. Wait. What happened? Let me just go back to this. Um, reload that layout. I think I may have just deleted it accidentally. OK, cool. So um, what I want to do is put a horizontal image in this horizontal box. So um, we have these studio images. Um, most of them are horizontal. So I am going to think about, again, content, what images talk to each other. Obviously, this image of a pug, it's cute, goes with this image of also the same pug. Um, and OK, I see. So what happens is so this template is, is basically two horizontal images touching which is kind of cool. It's very modern. Um, but let's put an image over here. Now, let's say you're like, well, this, this image box is OK, but I actually want something smaller. You can always click and drag your bounding boxes of whether it's an image box or a text box. You can, you can customize the heck out of it. If you want to drag it around, I'm just clicking and dragging. And again, you can find that center grid. I, I like things to be centered. Um, but if you want to put it like way over here, or something weird in the corner or, or over here or whatever you want to do, you can. Um, I'm a bit of a traditionalist, so I do like things to be centered. So let's say you're like, uh, actually, I want it smaller. OK, well, let's just make it smaller. This is how customizable Bookrate is. Sometimes, just like any program, this is a very vast program. It, you have to kind of give it a little, a, a minute to catch up with, if you're clicking and dragging. So, okay, this is a weird shape I've made. What image is going to fit in this spot, in this space? I'm going to think about it. And um, let's say we want to put this other, it's like three images of this pug in here. Bang. Okay, I mean, this is weird. And extreme, and again, if I it, because that was a, a a larger image in a smaller box, I can click and drag. No, I can click and drag and and sort of move this image around a little bit. So I obviously want to see the full shape of that dog. Cool. So that's kind of weird, but it's 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 cool. I mean, these images again talk to each other. This dog's looking this way. They're all kind of you know drawing me in. Again, I want to make sure that's not bad. Now, do I normally want my images touching? No, but I kind of think it's cool, especially because I have this negative space over here. Again, these are creative choices. There's no wrong way to make a book. Um, but uh, these are the choices that I'm making. Okay, let's just keep let's just keep going, and we're going to keep jamming through. Um, uh, let's uh, let's just drag and drop some images. Um, I'm going to look at some other 
uh, images that talk to each other. So I'm just going to drag and drop this image in here. Um, I want this image to be a little bit smaller. So if you hit shift on your keyboard and you come to the corner, it's going to proportionally resize our image, just like it would in like in design, right? So let's say I'm I'm just trusting my instinct. This is the right size of the image, and I want to center it. What I want to do is teach you how to make your own custom layout. Okay, cool. That's nice. I like it. I want to copy this image um, and put it over here on the left side of the page. So if you, again, go to Control and Copy, and then click on this next page on the left, and Command V, which is our shortcut on a Mac, at least for paste. Now we have these two matching images that are the same size at the same exact location. I like the spacing of this uh, pairing. I want to save this as a custom layout. What do I do? I go to um, Layouts, and you can see over here on the left, this is the uh, a mock-up of literally the layout that I've just made. You just press Save Layout, and it's going to say, do you want to save the left page, the right page, or the spread? And I want to save the spread because I want to reuse the spread a bunch. This is a cool spread. I'm just going to call it spread one. You can call it whatever you want. So now when I go to my layouts, these are ones that I've made over the years. Um, uh, you can see this is spread one. Cool. OK, so let's go back up to our photos. I am going to, um, now if I want to just delete this photo and not the actual image box, what you want to do is, if you can see, this is very small, you probably can't see it on your screen, but in the very bottom corner of your image is a tiny garbage can. <laughs> I'm going to hit that garbage can just to delete the image, but not the image box. I'm going to find an image that works with this, and um, which one was it going to be? Um, it's going to be, um, it's going to be um, creative choices on the fly. It's going to be, it's going to be this. So I'm just going to click and drag. Now, again, this feels nice. I like the negative space here. This is working. However, visually, I see a difference in color temperature. I'm not going to go into color temperature. Some of you may know what color temperature is. It's the warmth or coolness, the yellowy reds or the greeny blues of your image. To my eye, these are different temperatures. You know, it's cool if you just click on this, you know, if you just, <laughs> come on, if you, there we go. If you just click on the image, you're going to get this box here. And this has a lot of cool information. Fit to frame, uh, fill to frame. Don't worry about that because we already are, we haven't cropped this image. It's not that important. If you want to do some crazy stuff, I mean, the shape right now is square. If you're like, make it a circle, I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can. Or a triangle, super weird. I don't like it. I'm a purist. I want my images the way they should be. But I'm not saying you can't make a circle or a triangle. Um, if for some reason you uploaded it weird and you need to rotate it, you can just rotate it with these little buttons. If you want a border, again, I'm a purist. I don't want a border. Um, you can do that here. You can also zoom in if you're like, actually, I need a, you know, I, it wasn't zoomed in right. Um, you can you can do that. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is auto image adjust. It's actually quite good. It's just like if you were in Photoshop and you're like, I don't have the energy to color correct my image. Can you do it for me? If you toggle that on, give it a second. It's thinking it's doing its job. OK, so now, is that perfect? No, but it's not terrible because, it, to me, the color temp is a little bit closer. Let's do a preview. I mean, that's not bad, right? 
we don't need to talk too much more about color temperature, but <laughs> auto image adjust is a cool feature that Blurb offers. Um, and you can toggle it on and off. And I go back and click on that image and I don't like it, just toggle it off. So that's without the automatic correction and that's with it. Without, with. This is why taking a book, making a book takes so long. I'm gonna say, keep it. Now, let's say I love this layout. Personally, I kind of do, and I wanna do more page layouts just like that. I'm gonna to go to my layouts, this is like a shortcut. And this is um, spread one, I'm gonna say, make spread one. Uh, I wanna do it again. I'm just clicking these pages, I wanna do it again. I'm just gonna sort of let us flow into some nice kind of diptychs here. So um, go back up to our photos. Let's find some more photos that feel good together. So um, I'm gonna drag and drop this. Again, th this image is not the same size as the image box. So I can use this little draggy hand thingy and kind of put that image where I think it feels best. This is a nice outdoor sort of deep toned image. And I think that would look nice with um, this one. Okay, I'm gonna use my little draggy hand thing. All right, so again, uh, my creative choice is to put the subject matter, the dog towards the bottom of the frame. These are both outdoor images. We have the leaves, we have the ground, we have the fall off of the background. This is a nice diptych. Okay, keep going. Let's just do some um, uh, other ones, uh, other diptychs. Um, now there was, okay, this series. Here's an image. Again, let's say you're making a photo book uh, of a bunch of family photos and you have like a hundred photos. First of all, I don't recommend importing 100 photos into book right because you're just going to be overwhelmed. Bring it down to 50 if you can. Bring it down to, to 40 if you can. Um, but images in your book, don't just plop them in random. Let them tell a story. Think about how the viewer is going to interact with this beautiful physical object. They're going to flip through the pages. They're going to have it forever. Um, think about that, really keep the viewer in mind and bring them through an emotional journey through your images. Oops. If you ever do something and you're like, you know, you want to undo it quickly, you can always do Command Z on a Mac and that will undo uh, what you do. I just nudge that, that image. So again, this image just is a little bit too low in the box. So I'm going to click and drag it up. But here is what I noticed is that this image has, is like a guy with a dog camping and there's a little Stanley thermos of which I own. Um, and then there's another Stanley thermos over here, cute. So um, these images work together and that's an easy pairing. Um, and they're kind of, the, the thermos line is kind of in the same level. Um, all right, I'm gonna do one more just like this. Uh, so let's say here's this, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to not judge these photos. Again, they're not mine. These are stock. Um, we're just gonna grab this image. Let's say, okay, this is great. I love this image. Let's say you you actually wanna put some text here, finally, in the book. I'm gonna just click on this box. I'm gonna click on the garbage can and delete that content box. And I am going to draw in I'm going to input in my own text box. Um, if someone from Blurb could text me with a time update, that would be wonderful. Okay, so um, if we look at this line up here, the only things that I really think are important, don't worry too much about this stuff, um, but if you do the place text, click on that, you're going to get a pencil icon. And if you click, and drag, you're basically making yourself a text box. And just like an image box, you can move it around, you can center it, you can put it somewhere weird over here, whatever you want. I Again, I, I just, I have to center it because that's the way I am. Um, it's not actually gonna print gray, it's just 
book right says a text box starts gray. So if you click in here, you can just start saying, write about, I can't write, write about my dog. Okay, um, it's great, great, great story so far. Um, here's how you make a text box, just like using Word or whatever other program you might use. You can highlight that text, you can change the font. There is a good number of fonts we can play with. Um, I, I'm going to just say, let's, let's use crimson text. because It's kind of nice. Um, we can change the color of the font. If you want to go crazy, I don't, I want it to be black, uh, size. Some people want to be able to read <laughs> the, the, your book and not wear their glasses. So, um, you can make it bold again, it's just like any other text, uh, program. You can align it. You can center it. You can um, do all these things. You can rotate it. Again, I don't know why you would do that necessarily, but um, you can create an outline. Uh, so here's all the things you can do with your text. Um, and I just think it's nice to have some text, you know, especially if you're making a book, um, if it's a gift for someone, uh, if you want to write about yourself, if you want to put in a, a bio of, of who you are as an artist, um, if you want to, um, gosh, if you want to, uh, like this book, the new book that I just did, Are You Okay? Volume One, is a collection of portraits and interviews. So there's always a page on the left of a portrait, just like this, and then on a page or two on the right of text. And I built that book in BookWrite by making, just like we're doing, my own custom um, layouts. Because again, I like to kind of have full control because I'm a control freak. Um, and because I, I have been using Blur Book Rate for many years and it, it feels comfortable. So again, that's how we make a, um, a text box. Let's go crazy and make this text box smaller. And let's just say, I'm gonna go back in here. Again, please excuse that I'm just, being very lazy, but let's say you wrote a really cool paragraph here, <laughs> uh, which I did not do, but that's what I'm showing you. Let's say you want to put an image underneath here. Okay, now, just like we did to place text, we're going to go to place photo. Think about place photo and place text as like adding a photo or adding text. So I'm going to just click place photo. And again, it's not going to place a photo automatically. It's just gonna give you the ability to draw, like we did, a custom photo image box. So you can see a pencil, and if you look closely, there's like a little icon on, of a photo. Um, so I'm gonna just click and drag, and I'm just gonna make myself a little image box. And again, I'm gonna center it. Don't be surprised. Maybe I'll actually align it with the text, right? So you can see that line on the, on the left, just like using InDesign or Illustrator or any of these other Adobe programs. I'm a Mac user, so that's what I'm familiar with. When you see that, that blue line on the left, that means that the edge of your text box and the edge of your image box are lined up perfectly. If it's off a little bit, you're not gonna see that. But once you kind of move over here and you hit that blue line, it's aligned and that's gonna make me feel happy because things are even. And I'm just gonna grab a random photo and I'm gonna bring it in here. And so we kind of wrote something cool and maybe we need to move this image box up a little bit, still aligned because we have that blue. And you know, it's cool. Again, I love when things are even. If you see, you can, on the left, we can see that the text and the image are aligned. And on the very bottom of both of these images, you can see there's a blue line on the bottom, which means the bottom of both those image boxes are aligned. So everything's lined up kind of nicely. And, and that feels good. And again, this is just us making our own custom pages. Um, to reiterate, if you like love this layout and you wanna make sure that you can always save it and go back to it, if we were in a real class, I would ask you how to do this and you would tell me because that's how we teach, but that's not what's happening today. You're just listening. So I'm gonna go to layouts and I'm going to go to save layout. And then I'm gonna say, save a spread, and I'm just gonna call this spread two. Again, it's helpful to, I don't know, we gave it a better name, but that's not what I did. So if you mouse over 
these things. Here's spread one, and then this is spread two. These are other spreads that I've made over the years. So any spread that you save in book rate, whether it's today or in six months, they're going to be saved in your layouts, um, which I think is nice. Um, but for that reason, it's nice to make sure you name them something uh, a little bit more helpful. So, okay, let me just uh, see if there's anything else. 40 minutes, great. Um, I am going to, what else should we talk about? Um, let's just do a quick uh, preview of our book, and then we'll talk about making a cover. Okay, so I am going to, We've for so, so far, we've made 13 pages. Again, making a book for me takes weeks. It takes weeks of every day working on the intricacies of Gosh, what images go in? What text goes in? It's a it's an arduous, wonderful process. So, again, this is very quick and to the point. Um, and just you know, take that in. This is not how you would make a book. <laughs> be, please be more thoughtful. But let's do a preview. Okay. So what you see on the left is th what's on the right is page one. What's on the left is basically a blank page that you cannot put any content in. It's going to be, uh, gosh, what does Blurb call it? Um, Blurb can tell me. It's a it's a piece of paper. It's a it's a blank page that you can't put any images in. Um, it's page zero. There's probably a better word that Blurb can tell you. So we have this nice, placid, inviting image, and I'm just going to use my arrows on my keyboard to flip through. Cool, we have this nice black and white spread. I like that, I'm flipping through. We have this wacky, colorful pug situation. It's very modern, you know, it's good. Now we have these diptychs that, this layout that I created, we, we auto-corrected that image. Again, this, the, this is the same layout as this. And these images work nicely, and this is the same layout as this. So uh, the repetition of those sizes feels good for me. That may be this weird little two images in the text thing. And so we're just we're just getting through it. Um, let's talk about the cover. So I'm going to mouse up over the top. Obviously, your cover is going to be your very first makes sense, and it's your first uh, your page that you interact with. So you're going to see that you have a back cover, a front cover, and a spine. Now, there's all different kinds of ways to um, approach your cover. I will say, the, this is so stupidly obvious, but people do judge a book by its cover. So I want you to think about, um, about your cover. Now, I've never, I guess I've never saved a cover layout, so there's no cover layouts here. Um, these are cover layouts that are suggested. I, I don't like any of them. Uh, sorry, no offense to, to, to book rights or blurb at all, but I, again, I, I like things to be very simple. So I will tell you two ways that I like to make covers. The what, what I have done in the past and what I did for this most recent book, Are You Okay? An 8x10 trade book, is I designed in Photoshop, which is my program of choice, a file that was exactly um, oh gosh, if it's uh, 10, uh, 16 by 8 or whatever, whatever this size file, this, so this is 10 and then 8, 8. So yeah, 10, 16 by 10. Uh, I'm not a mathematician. I, I, I figured out the exact size of the cover. And I designed that in Photoshop. And then I dragged that in as a file, as a photo, and plopped that in and... Um, that was how I designed my, my, my cover. But we don't have to do it that way. You can do it just this way. So let me show you as an example how you could do that. So let's say we have this um, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to choose an image here. Um, okay, this, this uh, horizontal, I'm going to drag it in. Now this is um, obvious to say, but you need to make sure your images are high res images. JPEGs, I'm going to say work best, but you need to make sure that they're at least as big as the image box you are putting them into. So for example, 
This is an eight by 10 book. This image here is exactly eight by 10 in inches. So the file that I pulled in has to be at least eight by 10 inches at 300 DPI JPEG if you wanted to print properly. If that's incorrect, blurb tech, please tell me. If we're doing a cover, a cover is twice as big. So this has to be twice as big of an image. Just make sure. If, if you don't do that, um, you will get a, a warning from blurb saying, hey, this, is, this image is, um, is not the right size. Now, this idea that I had of making this image fit here is um, not really great because it's this is a weird suggestion, but I want to show you literally just drag an image in again, as long as it is at least uh, 10 by 16 at 300 DPI, it could be your cover. And all I did is I just clicked and dragged the, the, the corners of that image box to fill the cover and I can kind of move it around a little bit. Is this a great cover? Not really, but I'm just showing it to you as an example. Um, I want you to know that you're going to get this orange warning sign, which basically just says, if you go over to fix, it's going to say, hey, this image is off the printable area, which means that you're telling the image, you're telling blurb that to sort of uh, drag this image off the printable area, that's fine. Um, if you go to preview, this is what your cover would look like. As long as that image is high res and appropriately sized, here's your cover. I mean, is that good enough for me? No, but I want you to know that you can just try, drag an image in. Um, I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna do something else. So let's just get a really cool image and I'm gonna drag it here. I'm going to make it um, maybe a little smaller. I'm going to, again, put it in the center, but I'm going to let it be kind of up high a little bit. Maybe I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and center it. And let's say um, I want to add a text box to name my book and I'm going to click in here and I'm just going to say, again, don't name your book this book about my dog. And I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to center it and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and like, cool, that's my cover. But let's think about the spine. So let's click here in this gray box and this is, you're going to be seeing your text go sideways. It's kind of weird, but I'm going to name it the same name as the name of my book, book about my dog. Um, and if you want to, you know, highlight that and kind of make it uh, go to the left margined, centered, right margined, you can kind of figure that out. Um, you can make it larger, just like any other text. And what's going to go on the back? I don't know. Let's put a really cool um, image of like a dog looking off into the distance in the back. And I want that to be full bleed. So I'm gonna drag it over here. I'm gonna click shift. I'm gonna hold the corner and I'm gonna drag it. So it's just about, and I'm gonna use my, the, my arrows on my keyboard. So it's just about uh, the full size of that um, page. And let's do a preview. So, I mean, that's not terrible. Um, Here's your opening image, here's your title, here's your spine title, and here's a full bleed image on the back of your book. I'd pick that book up. Again, choose a great image for your, um, for your cover. Um, let me just do a time check again. Where are we? Okay, so um, let's talk about one of uh, my favorite sort of tools in the toolbox here, which is, um, under, do, 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 do. I always forget where it is because that is oh, it's down here. There's probably different ways to get it. Um, manage pages. Manage pages is where we get to shuffle around the order 
thank you time um, for uh, of the pages. So manage pages, you're going to get this box. If this feels too small, well, I guess it's already this is as big as I can get. So let's say we've put all the images in. Think about it again. If you have experience doing this, I always think of a book as a website, as of anything, as um, as if I were handling a box of my prints, showing it to a curator. Whether you've done that or not, think about presenting, putting your best foot forward, thinking about your sequence, thinking about how someone's going to move through the emotions, the the visuals, um, the flow of your book, and this is where we get to do that. Or one of the ways. So, okay, let's say you are like actually this uh, this pay the spread that has the close up and then the text. I want to put it earlier in the book because I want to tell my story or, or, earlier. So, if you want to highlight both of those pages at the same time, I would click Shift. Never mind. I would just click and drag. Whoa, what? I don't, know. I don't know why it's making that. Sorry, or whether it's something. Just want you to. Okay. It's weird. Uh, maybe this one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't ask me what just happened. Um, I'm gonna click and drag this spread again. I'm just clicking and dragging, and I'm gonna say, where do I want it to land? That black line indicates where it's gonna land, and I'm gonna put it here. So I'm just reordering again. Um, I'm going to try to, this page doesn't want to go. I'm going to click this spread and I'm going to, I'm going to click this spread and I'm going to bring this one over here. So I'm roughly just showing you that you can reorder your pages. You don't have to have the order in mind. And I would even recommend don't worry too much about the sequencing until the end. Sequencing is what I do at the very end. I, I think about it for sure, but you know, let this manage pages button be one of your final sort of tasks. Um, uh, let's see what else we want to do. Um, oh, what if you wanted to make um, a, a, a color block? So for my last book, I had these pull quotes um, and uh, for a few of the pages, and I made a turquoise full page color block. And put text in there, and it was kind of cool. So, um, what uh, what did I do? How did I do it? Um, I did shapes, square. I drew page, or I drew my bounding box of my shape. Now I click into this, and I go to color. And now, if you are a color nerd and you know your RGB, you can type it in. You can kind of just click into, you can kind of generally choose. Let's say this is sort of similar to what I, I, I chose. Um, cool. Here's, here's a color block. And I think that's kind of neat. Um, again, you can let Blurb make some weird shapes. No, thank you. I'll do square. Um, there's a color block. Now, let's say you want to put text on top of the color block. Oh my gosh, we're getting fancy. I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to put some text in here. Now, if you're writing on top of a color, it's best to not use black. You want to use white, I would assume, or you can get creative. You can click on this little white box here. That's going to say white. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make it big. And I'm just going to say, Pull quote here. Again, don't use that ugly <laughs> um, font. Uh, let's make it even bigger. Um, and oh, yeah, that's about it. Um, so maybe there's some inspirational quote. Don't use an inspirational quote. Maybe there's something you want to say here. Uh, and, and it's a fun way to kind of break up your, um, your book. And here's what it looks like. It's just a big page of color. Um, so images, 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 and then bang, we get this cool, you know, it's almost like a, 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 a something that will break up sections of your book. So how did I do that? I will go over it again. There's this thing called shapes next to 
you know, input photo, input text, shapes. Again, let's say you really want to make a circle. I don't know why you'd make a circle, but you can do it. It's going to give you a circle. And again, we can kind of make it centered. And then you click on that. Um, and you go to color. And you choose some random color. And you start, you press apply. So again, you could put some text in here. You could put an image over here. Uh, you know, these are creative choices that I don't have time to get into right now. Um, and um, I'm doing pretty good. Um, so uh, let's think about how many pages as I'm checking my time. Um, let's think about how many pages uh, you should or you might want to have in a book. If you think about um, a hardcover book, right, that's going to give your book more kind of chunkiness, uh, um, stability, a thickness. If you're going to use a soft cover, it's going to be obviously the soft cover is, is very thin. Um, it's a great product, but it's thin. Um, it's going to be flimsier if you have less pages. If you have a 20 page soft cover book, that's a flimsy book. It, it, it makes a great proof of concept. Excuse me, it makes a great um, a leave behind, if you know what that is, old school marketing language for leaving a uh, sort of cheap, affordable um, selection of images at a gallery or a store or something. Um, and it makes a great, like, easy holiday gift too. Like what if you just chose 20 images um, or 40 images if you had 20 pages, or sorry, 20 images. Um, let's say you just did 20 pages quick and dirty of your dog, you know, throw them together. It's going to take you an hour. Soft cover, it's, the soft cover stuff is going to be cheapest. And you printed a bunch of those copies and you gave them as gifts. That's like a really nice gift. But um, I do think that if you want to make a more substantial body of work, you want to have more than 20 pages. So we're going to go up to the plus symbol. And we're going to think about adding pages. How many pages do we want to add? 100? No, thank you. But let's add 20 more pages. We can always add more after that. And at the beginning of the book, at the end of the book, uh, after a certain page, I'm going to say, um, let's just add them after page um, 15, which is the last page that we have, I think. And I'm going to add pages, and it's going to automatically just, oh, you know, I, I let me start over. Uh, I didn't, I, I'm going to add uh, 20, pa 20 pages, please, after page 16. Now, you'll have those pages. So now you're just giving yourself more room, more places to add pages. Um, think about how much is this book going to cost? The more pages you have, the higher the cost will be. Soft cover is cheaper, hard cover is more expensive. When you're thinking about a photo book, if you use the standard paper, that will be less expensive. The Mohawk professional grade paper is more expensive. If you're going to do a trade book, which is not photo paper, that's going to be less expensive, but the paper is thinner. It's not professional photo grade paper. If you're doing a little mini five by five, which I think is Blurm's newest size, that's going to be obviously cheaper than their large uh, 12 by 12 or <clears throat> the large square, which I love. So uh, these are all things to keep in mind. How much do you want to spend on this book? If you're going to put it on the Blurb bookstore, how much do you want people to have to spend on it? Um, so I can't answer those questions for you, but I just want to make sure you keep that in mind, um, especially when you decide, OK, when I turn on book right and it says create and it says what size book do I want to make? Just keep those things in mind. Okay. Um, let's um what else have we not gone over? Um, I know there's gonna be questions and I want to make sure that I have time for them. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna pull in a few more images 
and sequence them again and look at your questions. So I'm gonna sequence, I'm gonna put this image in again. I'm just kind of pulling them in uh, and letting them be the size that they are because that's fine. I'm gonna center this. There's my center line. And I like that that outdoor image works with this outdoor image. I'm gonna center it. Again, sometimes BookWrite is a hefty program and it's, it's juggling a lot of high-res files. It's gonna have a hiccup here and there. So I'm gonna just let that uh, center itself again. If you would, thank you. Now, one thing I haven't done is make a border. Personally, again, I would never put a border on an image because I'm a purist and I'm very stubborn, but some people would like a border. So all I did is I just clicked on the image box and I got this um, photo window and we can go to border style we can do full dashed we can do all kinds of stuff let's do a, a full border let's do a wacky color because i'm feeling wacky and i'm gonna do that red and let's talk about the wind so i'm gonna say apply but let's make it so we can see it again this is a very weird creative choice that i wouldn't recommend but i want you to see what it looks like here's a border it's a weird border um, but that's, if you want to make a border on your image, I, again, I don't celebrate Christmas. Some people do. You can make red and green borders. If you celebrate Hanukkah, you could do blue and yellow borders or any other holiday. Um, or if you want to just bring in a modern touch, something kind of out of the ordinary, you know, something weird. And I think leaning into the unique is a key to success in making a book. Put a weird border on. Um, so here, again, this is us playing around with uh, image blocks, um, some text, and you know the flow of our pages so far. Um, here is, again, teaching while designing is very hard. So this is not a great design, but that's a cover, um, it's not that bad. The last thing I'm just gonna say is when you are ready, let's say you spent the weekend, again, I encourage you to do it because if you order by the 18th and you do priority shipping, you'll get the book in hand. This is the last thing I'll do and then I'll stop sharing and answer questions. When you are ready to upload your book to the Blurb bookstore, which is once you create an account, which is free, you will get your own bookstore, which basically means under your account will be all the projects that you've uploaded and your bookstore is where people can buy your book. So I'm not gonna do this, but you would just press upload and it's gonna say, are you sure? Are you extra, extra sure You're, that this is as it should be and you've you know checked all your spelling? And that's how you basically um, upload your book and then you're done. So we made a book. We made a really weird book, but you've learned how to um, upload photos. You've learned how to pull photos in. You've learned all about your layouts, text files. We didn't go, we didn't go over, but um, it's very self-explanatory. If you're writing a book, a poetry book, a novel, you can upload your text files that way. Um, we've learned about adding pages, deleting pages, obviously is kind of obvious. Um, and managing pages, again, which I love, which is how we, we drag and drop and reorder things. And um, I'm gonna leave it there. And I, I hope that you have inputted all the information that I just threw at you. And uh, now I am going to go back to, hang on. Um, I'm gonna try and find my window. Oh, here we go. So. Hopefully you can see me now. And um, cool. So I'm going to go and in, into the comments and see what Borb has passed me. OK. Um, all right, here are some questions. Let me answer some. How long does taking a gift book make? I assume Jesse's weeks and months timeline was for a pro book. I mean, that's a great question. Um, so how long does taking a gift book make? Yeah, I guess I would, what is the difference between a gift book and a professional book? First of all, 
anyone's a photographer that says they're a photographer. Um, yes, I've been doing this for a million years, but like, who cares? You can make a professional book with blurb, with book right. That's the whole point. Um, a gift book for me is something quick. It's small. It's soft cover. It's maybe 20 images put together, and that could take literally an hour, and I'd be done. It could be even shorter. So a professional book, again, is something that's, you know, 100 plus pages and takes a lot more thought. So can you blur or soften the edges of photos? Now, I don't have the answer for that, Janet, but thank you for that question. Um, can you blur or soften the edges of photos in BookWrite? I'm going to let a, a blurb tech person answer that. Um, I personally, if I wanted to blur or soften the edges of a photo, I would do that in my photo editing software like uh, Photoshop. Um, I'm going to just keep going through some of these questions. Um, some of my borders got cut off with the printing of my first book. I thought they were within the dotted red line. The printing was fabulous, wonderful, we love blurb. Um, so why did the borders get cut off with the printing of your first book? Obviously, Candice, thank you for that question. I can't actually answer it because I, I can't see it in front of me, but it, it is possible that, yeah, that your image box was, extended beyond the dotted red line, which is the cut off, which is the trim line. That's the only reason why that would happen. And it's possible that it was a user error. Um, it, I, I, again, anyone can make a mistake. I just got 50 copies of my newest book from Blurb and they are identical. So it may have just been that you know the image was not in exactly the right place and it can be frustrating which is why blurb does say when you go to order your book it even says hey make sure you get a proof <laughs> and a proof is a single copy if i'm making a 200 page book it's expensive i would make a proof of half of it just to make sure the color is right just to make sure it's feeling good so um i'm sorry that happened though candace but i, I encourage you to try again how do you send it to publishing and get the rates? Yeah, so all of the pricing, there's a great pricing calculator on Blurb, the Blurb website, not BookRight, the program. But if you go to blurb.com, maybe someone can put that in the chat, um, and you go to you know products and you can see photo books, trade books, lay flat, there is a pricing calculator that I use all the time. And you can say, okay, I want a uh, image draft book, I want this paper, I want this many pages. It will in real time show you the price of that book. And, and that's just a really nice way to say, okay, I'm gonna do a gift book, which is gonna be 20 pages soft cover. It's gonna cost me this price. I'm gonna do a full length portfolio of my work. It's gonna be a large format. It's gonna be this much. So I, I recommend before you jump in to really building your final book, spend some time on, um, the Blurb website and, and do some price calculating to help you kind of get a sense of, of, of where you want to end up. So, How to flow text around photos. I'm trying to understand what that means. Blurb, can you help me? Um, I, I'm not understanding exactly how to flow, what that means to flow text around the photos. However, I will say, just like we created those text boxes, you can create um, a, uh, an image and you can make a text box that kind of goes around the, the image. Um, I don't know, again, I'm, I don't know everything, um, and maybe Blurb can answer this um, better than I can, uh, but, um, you recommend that you email blurb at events at blurb.com with that excellent technical question and they can answer because I can't answer it. Um, once you inserted a picture in a box you created, is there a way to copy the box onto another page? Yeah, excellent question, Marco, thank you. So once you insert a picture into an image box, 
is there a way to copy that image box onto another page? Yes, and I did that, but I'll tell you how I did it. So let's say you input, whether it's through using a template or using um, drawing your own image box. If you're like, oh, I love the size of this image box, it's so great. You can literally hit um, Command C on your Mac keyboard, which is copy, the shortcut for copy. You can also probably go to the top of book right um, and, and select copy, and then go onto another page and press Command V or paste. And so you'll have that exact same uh, box, image box. So. Any photo calling tips? You have 200. How do you get it to 40 or 50? I love this question. Um, photo calling. Photo calling or pick selecting or narrowing down your group of images. Again, you know, I'm a professional. I put a lot of weight on the selections of images that I show, but like, even if you're just a hobbyist, I still think you should put some real intentionality into what you choose. If you have 200 images, um, there's many ways to do it. One of my favorite ways to do it, whenever I make a book and I, I have made, I just calculated at least 15 books in the past 10 years, many, many of those with blurb. When I get down, if I have 200, sometimes I will literally in Photoshop, um, resize everything to like three by five or four by six and get really, really cheap prints from Kinkos or whatever your, or CVS or something terrible. Um, uh, and I will lay out 200 little proofs, cheap proofs on a big table. And that's how I like to call if I'm really getting down to the nitty gritty um, because it's hard to do this on the computer. Um, maybe you want to wait till you get to 100 to get your little proofs made, but I love doing that. Um, or you can, you know, yeah, staples will make cheap prints too. But, I, you know, we are making a tangible object, which is a book. So bring your work into the tangible and make some really cheap prints if you can afford to do that. If you can't, I would say, you know, op open up, um, you can do... Um, a contact sheet view in Photoshop, a contact sheet, if you don't know, is a big grid of all your images and look at them that way. I, I have one you can see, oh, right here on my wall. That's basically me making a contact sheet of, of for this new book. There is no real way to answer that question other than what images speak to you. Is there a diversity in the imagery, like we had some studio studio images, we had some outdoor images. Um, pick selecting is 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 a burden that all artists must bear. Um, but again, I love getting to maybe the hundred mark and making really cheap prints and putting them out on the floor. If one of my favorite writers, uh, Jennifer Boylan, um, a wonderful queer writer, she will sometimes when she's writing a book, she'll make, she'll share images of chapters that she's putting together on her floor. And they're just stacks of chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. And again, it's a physical thing and you're getting physical with it. And that's part of the process. So behind you on the wall, is that a mock-up layout of a photo book? Yeah. So th all this stuff over here on the wall is literally um, this the color images over here, I can't point and look. Um, that is me pick selecting for, oh, you, now you can see this newest book, Are You Okay?, which you can buy um, on blurb.com on my, if you just search for my name or you search for Are You Okay? I think it's currently a blurb staff pick. That is how I um, get to that calling point. So I went from 150 images down to whatever that is, 30. Um, I think it's a helpful tool. And that is like a $10 print from Staples. Um, you can then go and cut out each little image. You can get a, a grease pencil like we used to do in the old days uh, for your contact sheet. But I really think it's helpful to, to, again, we're making a physical object. This is a precious physical object made from images that were digitized. So like just, print your work, it's gonna help you. Um, if you have questions that we did not get to today, please email events at blurb. Um, you can always uh, 
find more information about me um, at my websites, which I think are probably somewhere. Um, and I'm going to check. Um, okay, cool. Wrap up. So yeah, so here's the wrap up. I did not get to all of your questions, and I apologize. Hopefully, tech is um, giving you more answers. This is a real condensed class. Uh, as I mentioned, I do um, artist coaching and, and mentoring for artists, which I am so passionate about because I was lucky enough to be mentored as a young photographer. I'm happy to talk more about your portfolio or helping you more with your book, or I teach people how to make websites with Squarespace. So, you know, get in touch with me. Um, and I would also encourage you to just play around. Learning a new software is hard. I am like still learning how to use Instagram and I kind of hate it, but I younger people can teach me and I learn new things all the time. And it's effective. You're, the reason why Blurb gave you these stock photos, I think, is just to let you play around with them. Like create a book today. You don't have to print that book, you can just, ignore it once you make it, but start playing around, start dragging and dropping, start trying to make new text boxes. Um, and, and I encourage you to just get over the hump of I'm scared of using a new platform, a new, uh, you know, technology, um, and just do it. And, you know, no book will ever be perfect, just like no piece of art is ever perfect, just like no portfolio of artwork is ever perfect. There's imperfections and we have to just do our best and just create. We are creators, it are, it's our job to create. So if you feel frozen, if you feel overwhelmed, just give yourself a little kick in the pants and start making. And it's gonna feel really good. It feels really, really, really good to get that box from Blurb. I get so excited when I get my Blurb boxes because I'm like, what did I make? Um, I think that might be where I end it, which is encouraging you just to be creative and, 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 and let it be messy and do your best. Yes, make a book and take a photo of it on social media and tag Blurb. That's what I do. Um, and I think it's cool to see who else is using Blurb and how people are using Blurb. Um, there's, I've done Blurb magazines, which are really cool, trade books, um, photo books. I've never done a lay flat. Um, I've never done the wall art, but just, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, and there's also a lot of information on the Blurb website and the Blurb tech team um, is there. When I have had questions, um, I, you can email support and they will email you back. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, unless there's anything else Blurb you want me to um, talk about. Um, I think these are just the first few webinars that Blurb is having about the book write system. So um, I'm not sure if there's any other text heavy uh, uh, webinars about text heavy books, but um, thanks again for coming and good luck making your book.